Hey, once Joe is ASC, and we have Ryan Wells. He's a auto hockey hero member. And he had sent me this really cool script he wrote with UIA about helping him. And I thought it was really cool. I'm like, why don't we make a video demonstrating how to convert it to V2? Just because it's such a hot topic. And uh, we, we'll give you a discount to our course if you're interested in learning how to convert to V2. But anyway, go ahead, Ryan. I'll let you show him what this thing does. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, thanks, Joe. Yeah, and Isaiah. Uh, this quick, easy script I put together. It um, allows me to uh, log in or register uh, on web pages without having to, oh, to use a standard set of login details that I like to use for all my different accounts. Um, and we'll go through what it does. I'll just please show you an example. This is the code written in UIA and auto uh, v1. And if I switch to a Mailchimp, for example, here is a standard login page. Everyone will understand and know. I can run my script and what it will do is automatically insert the generic details that I like to use when I'm registering for any account anywhere. So it saves me a lot of time if I'm registering on a new website, if I am signing up looking for a job or anything I'm trying to do, I can always use the standard stuff. So just a, a real simple script, a bit like RoboForm. Anyone knows RoboForm? Uh, that's what this does. And now I was going to say, like, I use, for example, the Google Alt autofill, but there's sometimes that there's some forms that the autofill doesn't take it. Right. And I, maybe this is uh, a good solution for that because it's not always that they work as intended. So I get what you're doing. And uh, I understood correctly, you were using the UIA interface, right? That's right, Isaiah. And the other reason I like using AutoHotKey for this is I can make it dynamic. So yes. I can make uh, my username and password anything I want it to be or any other fields right. based on any other uh, functions I want to write in my auto hotkey code. I was going to say, I, I would personally have a, a different hotkey with two or three different profiles that I would just be able to choose yes. very simply, right? Like that's Great idea, Joe. Yeah, so you could have your business login details and you could have your registration details and your personal ones, for example. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it would look on the part of going ahead and um, converting it to V2 code. So if you allow me, you can stop sharing there yeah, so bet. I can go ahead and share here. What are, the Thank fun you. part of this, right, is we're converting it to V2, but the thing is Descalada has restructured the V2 library. So this is where you got to, like, you know, mileage yeah. may vary as far as... You, Right. There's there's two sections to this. So um, there's two parts to this. Let me see. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Can you zoom in some? Yeah, sure. So the first thing you will notice here is that if you have the AutoHotKey v2 language selected on this file, you will start getting a lot of little um, red lines indicating different types of problems. And there is a part on your uh, VS Code that allows you to look at the problems. Uh, I have it here on the right side. It's not really um, needed to be there, but I like it there mm -hmm. because I see kind of a, like a list. So this is the problems that we have. You can click on them and it would jump to the line. So this is very quick. It's good for quickly fixing stuff. And usually you have kind of like a little description of what is going on. So probably if you're converting stuff, it will be easy for you to follow along and see what is going on. Now, the one of the issues here has to do with the location of the libraries. So these two are not going to be fixed for now because I do not have the library directly on my computer. But if I add this file, if I include that, it would be that file. The UIA interface is no longer called UIA interface. It's just UIA.ahk, and the UIA browser stays the same. So that's the only thing that you have to do. Set title match mode. So set title match mode now it is defaults not, to two, right? It defaults to two, but what it's complaining about is that comma that you have right there. And you will have it for many other commands. In V1, you usually put those commas there. You can remove the comma, and you're good to go with most of them. The other thing that I would take care is text. So this in V1 was actually text. Now everything is an expression. So you have to enclose it either in single quotes or double quotes. Um, I like the single quotes because I don't have to press shift to do the quotes. I just press one key and it is just quoted. As you can tell, those are the main changes. Everything is an expression, so I don't need to force expressions anymore. That's the same. And after that, let me see what else is going on in here. Yeah, this is the last problem we have, which is uh, the hotkeys now need you to put the 
um, brackets to tell where the hotkey starts and where it ends. That's the new way of doing hotkeys. After that, everything else looks like it's totally fine. So, <laughs> so now here's the thing. Um, that's the main difference in our hotkey language. Now, some of them, like winget title, I don't know if you remember that you were putting title here as a parameter, so as a variable that would take the title of the right. window, right? Now, how you do that is actually using it as a function. And I think people might be um, familiarized with just using a function and then just having this. It's yeah. the same way, but now you do not have a specific parameter that takes the thing. You just put it in a variable like you would in it, any other You know system. what, is is when I first wrote the Excel function library I had, I had built it kind of like the way your original one was. And then later I changed it to this because it's just clearer. Like, it's, it's just, I'm, yeah, I'm just thinking that it thing and storing it yeah. there. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Right. So that's one of the main changes that you will see. So after I look at this, um, I see the tooltip. It doesn't matter. The tooltip is exactly the same as before. But now this is a um, an expression, so I don't need to force an expression clearer right there. And everything else just has to do with the UIA library. So uh, two changes that I know about the UIA library is that here, instead of find first by name and whatever, what you would use is a different function. It's called find elements. Oh, sorry. I wanted to do that. Yeah. I think that's how you have to do it in UIA now. I There is no... Let me see. Yeah, it is just find first. Okay. So so now how it works is that you're going to put in here the condition, which is what you were doing, kind of like a conditional thing. But let me remove this part. We don't need it anymore. Take this out. So the condition here, what happens here is that usually you had to pass what type of control you were passing here. That changed a little bit. I will not go too much into it but basically what you would pass is an object and for the if i remember control type is more or less how it goes you would put edit and for the name you would put the text that you just had right that's it you don't need none of this and there's a third thing that you can put is the match mode which it is going to be regex that's what changes so i'm doing exactly the same as you were doing the only difference is that things are now key value pairs so what you had in a parameter like this now is a specific key or probably localized control type or something like it's that it's actually easier to read as well as joe was saying it's easy it's more right. intuitive actually actually it depends on how you write it down and i actually like to just put it like this you will see and i would just sorry well here and that would let me know that for the localized type i have my edit for the name i have whatever i need and for my match mode i have regular expression and after i finish finding that object then i just set the value that i want into that's basically the main change that you were going to be doing um, with an editor like VS Code, you might get some speed by doing this. Now I just have all the names, you know what I mean? Um, cool thing, the order of it doesn't matter. So, but the problem is when you have different lengths like this, that you have different lengths right, of text, right. that's going to be a little bit annoying to automate. But I can still find ways to automate that because I can just target all the edit ones and just now say uh, localized control type edit, yeah. And and I guess the other thing, um, Isaiah, is the on the regex, um, people will see there that uh, I have like different use case, different uh, cases. But actually, that's not a very intelligent application of regex. I could make it so the the string or the the the, the words are 
not case sensitive. So, oh yeah, be a so, so, yeah. Smaller. So, so that could that could save a lot of space right there. Well, it because... actually make it even better because you didn't necessarily put every combination possible. Right, right. right. Yeah, that's, that's true. Or, yeah, make it even. Yes. So robust. now I just changed the whole thing. And, and I don't know if you noticed, it's because of the tool. It is a little bit easier for me to just go ahead and work with this tool. But once you get used to doing these kind of things, notice that, yeah, I can do that. Now, say, for example, username, user, space name, and those kind of things. You can grab this and make it a simpler, uh, regular expression by saying case insensitive, the username, with a space that is kind of like optional there. Right. And there you go. Right. That yeah. matches as well, user. As well, can I ask you, yeah. Sorry, Andrew, can I ask a quick question? You've got on the second on the second uh, parameter there, you've got localized control type as the second one. And on the first one, you have it as the first one. Does it, it matter? The order no, or it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, that's that's one of the good things about objects. Value pairs, so. right. the, yeah. the, the good thing about objects is that it doesn't matter in which order you put them. That's right. one of the great things about objects. They However, are in, in a variable. Uh, and, and when I need to access localized control type, it doesn't matter where it is. I just okay. name it, right? However, what I was going to say was if you were keeping this on one line, now that it's structured in the, um, in the key value pairs, if you were to put like your regex at the beginning, all of the beginnings would all line up. Right, so exactly. So, 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 so I put all my things that line up. Yeah. It's easier for yeah. humans to see the pattern, not the right. You know, the script. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now you 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 hit on 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 the nail there. It is kind of like I get used to doing it on the same way all the time. And this is the cool thing about V two. Um, it allows you to kind of like have the parentheses and the brackets in their own lines and still works. You see what I mean? So. Now, when I have it like this, now I can switch the location of stuff and the thing will continue working anyway. So cool. basically, yes, if I have it like that, match mode name, localized control type, I can just do this for all of them and then they will visually pair um, and would be easier for me to kind of like know what is going on. Well, or later on, yeah, right. right. Comma, that's it. So there you go. And, and then all of them start with the same thing. And I could just rewrite this regular expression to be a little bit more, you know, concise. You don't have to try every single thing. That's the point of a regular expression, making it easier to find patterns like this. Yes. So, exactly. so in the end, the amount of changes I made are minimal in this particular mm. script. And mm. uh, as you noticed, the the changes in in the commands and stuff was not so hard that it was like oh my god what am i gonna do no it, it was yes. very simple there's a few things that you have to get used to like these brackets here not everybody likes them but as soon as you get used to them like it doesn't matter you just create a hotkey and right away put your open brackets and there you have it you you, you already have your uh, uh the thing done so i think this is a very good demonstration of what we would do when we are, you know, converting a script from one version to another. Fantastic. In this case, it was just that additionally to the other hotkey syntax, we had to change a little bit how the other function worked. If the functions were very similar, you wouldn't have to do that. But that's a real world scenario as well, right? Like, yeah. you know, when you're switching, the libraries you're using may not even exist, let alone yes. be different, right? Um, but right. yeah. The, the other thing, thank you for convincing me that there's no way I'm going to use VS Code because I don't want to see all the emojis and the the things where it tells me here's your problems. Because for me, it just be, no matter what script it is, it'd be like, yeah, Joe, you know, you're, yeah, sorry. Um, no, 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 no. That's a good thing in, in the sense of, if especially when myself, I, I work with uh, other libraries from other people and try to convert them to B2. And if I go just watching what I'm doing, I probably might skip something. And if I already have a list of the things that I'm going to check and I just click on them and go and fix them or just find and replace a lot of them. I just click on one, find and replace. I just replace them in all the instances of my script. It is a quick process. Once you get used to it, um, you can do it. I wouldn't do this on a thousand, two thousand line of script. 
This script, short enough for me to take a few minutes, just do it. Uh, the only problem that I'm going to have is testing it. <laughs> you know, like, okay, let's see that it works as I'm thinking it would. That's the only part that I think it would take a little bit more, but converting it, not really. Yeah, we'll, we'll at some point finish converting it to, to make it available. So I'll yeah. put the URL up here when that's ready. Uh, but also our course from learning how to painlessly transition to V2 is available. It's half off right now. So if you want to um, get it now, it's normally 60. I think it's now 30. Uh, but if you use this URL below, you can get it for half off. Um, thank you, Ryan. This is, Like I said, this was a, a really cool idea in having it, you know, shoving your data into an, uh, an object or a profile where I can have different things I wanted, or maybe I have one for my wife or my son, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Easy. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So th thanks for demonstrating that. You're welcome. Thank Cheers. you. Hey, everyone. We're actually back. The Yesterday, we recorded the beginning of this video, and then Isaiah's had a really long call with Descalada, learning some new stuff that he's now, by the way, very close to kind of being done with the alpha version of UIA, so things are getting calming down, but he was going to yeah. walk us through some of the changes that we probably should have considered. Right. Now, this is the thing he definitely told me. Now, it's not that he's going to be out of alpha. He said that he is already in a state that no major changes to the syntax are going to happen, so I would consider it already better. So he's right, right now just fixing bugs. Your, your script, I modified it just a tad, uh, biggest changes were that you had a section, and maybe I could share that. Let me sh see. You had a section in which you were calling several uh, times the same function. Yeah. And usually when you have code like this that is repeating, the best thing is to just go ahead and do a loop and yep. just take a look at what changes and what is the same. And that's what <laughs> I did. I just grabbed the things that changed. All your options here that you were having here in your regular expression, mm -hmm. I kind of like condensed them down to uh, smaller regular expressions. And if I match this, then I will put my full name. If I match that, then I would put my zip code. And then yep. I just went out on a loop and did the, you know, the matching for each of them because it's the same, and, and for, the same function, right? <laughs> and for, cl for clarity and for scalability, this is great, uh, Isaiah, because the, the readability of this is uh, exponentially better, right? Right. I was going to say, for, is. yeah, for new people who are like, oh, I need to add a couple, it's going to be so easy. Yeah, you just add a few more here, and you don't have to touch the code. You just add the thing that you need to modify. That's and the other thing you've done, which we were talking about, is you've really fully applied the value of regex, which lets you, people who don't know, lets you be able to um, <clears throat> apply rules to strings that allow you to have uh, right. except multiple variants or, or uh, right. syntaxes, so, and that's right. great. So this one thing that says post and the co zip code, if I put it in a regular expression here and make sure that this is case insensitive, and I grab your post code here, this whole string, it mm -hmm. should match every single one of them. So let me just do mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So it just grabs all of them. So in general, um, let me add this. And this is the cool thing about doing this type of tests. This one is not being matched because this section here is not optional. But as soon as I put a question mark there, now it matches everything. So let me just update that. Cool. But usually, it, oh, no, I had it. It's just that I didn't copy it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, um, beside that, what I did want to mention are a few key. So there's three big changes to the UIA interface. First of all, he said, I don't know if you notice here that in your original code, you were using the find first function, right? Mm -hmm. Which returned the first one that matched. He told me, hey, I wouldn't recommend that from now on. Everybody should use the find element 99% of the time because the find first, which is the one that I was using, I was using browser.find first, that one is kind of like the raw function from UIA and not many people know how to use it. So if you're not a programmer, if you don't know what you're doing, usually 99% of the time, just use find element because certain features like matching with the regular expression only work in find element. Okay, so 99% of the time, find element. Second thing that he said that um, that is for me worth mentioning is that most functions like this that are considered a command, if you listen to the name, like find element, I just told the program, find that thing. If it cannot find it, it is not going to return, it's not going to return blank. 
what it's going to do is throw an error. Okay. So this is why here I'm trying this. It's going to try to find the element. And if it cannot find it, I will throw an error. Now, if what you want to do is use an if statement, then you should use the element exist, which actually returns uh, false or true. So I was talking about that with him because AutoHotKey does the same. AutoHotKey v2, if you use try, for example, control set text, and you give a control name here, if you if control set text doesn't find the control to set the text to it, it will throw an error. And that and I'm just told him to do to be consistent. Hey, your functions should throw errors if they fail to do what you told yeah. it to. Yeah, and just to just to loop back to the purpose of the script and for everyone who remembers, um, I don't know or the person who uses the script doesn't know the structure of the page and if right. these elements will exist. That's exactly. why I find elements exist is so useful here. Because right. you can conditionally uh, treat those right. uh, objects if they exist and also make sure there's no error if it doesn't work. Right. Because we don't exactly. know until we run it. But I'm just making the note, if you want to use an if statement, use the element exist. If you don't want to use an if statement, which is what I'm doing down here, I'm not using an if statement, then I just you can just put a try in front of it just to, mm. if you don't find it, don't notify me about that. I usually don't recommend that, at least output debug debug or something or message or do something but don't ignore the errors which is basically what uh, most people do that was the second change and the last change is not really a change it's something that we he explained me how to do um notice that in uh, there's something that i just noticed you see that in your in your um version you had to get the window title and you were grabbing the active window like this and then after you got it, you pass it to the browser. Now the UIA element, you can push, put any title right here. Like for example, hk uh, exe chrome.exe. Anything that you can use as a window title, you can put it here. Out of, you don't have to do the win exist or find element, whatever. You don't have to do that. Um, in that case, if I put A here is the active window. So. What he mentioned, and this is the, the key element for some people might be relevant. If you're looping through stuff as we are doing here, I'm looping and uh, searching over and over again. As you can tell, I'm using a cache. Now the cache here uh, is done in two steps. You create a cache request and you pass an array of the things that you want to cache. So instead of grabbing the whole element with all their properties, which is what find element does, it queries the browser for the element with all its properties. What I'm saying is go get me only the name and type of all the descendants and put it in what is called a build updated cache. And that's the request that I'm making. I put it here and this object that it returns just contains name and type and that speeds up the process by a lot actually when we were uh uh working with this the original find element version was taking one and a half seconds to complete this loop of 10 elements so if you're doing like a very big thing it might take five ten seconds to complete but as soon as we actually went ahead and built the cache it did uh, it did in 500 milliseconds so half a second to do the same amount of work. So it makes sense to learn how to cache stuff like this. It's just two lines of code. But knowing how to use this later on when you're searching in, in the cache, you will use instead of find element, you can use find cached element, which is basically the same function. And you could use, if you don't want to use the cached version, you can use the current one. You can use find element if you want, but using the cached version has a, a noticeable improvement in speed. Those are the three things that changed on uh, on the version two, which are good for, in my case. Jose, it's just uh, on the last one, just to understand a bit better. So you're basically capturing the elements first, mm -hmm. if I understand. Yes. And then you're interrogating them in the cache. So you've loaded in a in layman's terms, you've created a variable or something in the local memory, 
And then you're interrogating that and then you're acting on it rather than uh, well, query ask, query ask, query ask. And no, that, 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 that's the speech. I'd add one thing to that, Ryan, because you're, you're spot on. What I would just say is you're creating a much smaller subset of the initial of thing. the thing. Right? It just like contains a, tiny, a few details. Yeah. Right. Now, be a big uh, gotcha with this. You have to always be careful with this. It's the same with the browser. If you go to a web page and there's an element that is cached and you refresh the page, that element doesn't change. Even if it changed on the server, as you're looking at a cache thing, it doesn't change. That's why people say, hey, you have to clear your cache to see the changes, right? The same happens here. After I build the cache, anything that I query is kind of like an older version of the yeah. active mm -hmm. thing, right? So mm -hmm. the browser element has the current, and in, in when you do the find element, you're looking for stuff that are currently in the browser. But if you have a cached version and some elements changed, you're not going to see the change in this list. So you have to be careful with yeah. that. In my case, every time I press the control F6, I just go ahead and build the cache, right? So that is part of um, the, the idea. Hey, just build the cache just by having just two um, properties instead of all of them. Well, is it, it will is, make it easier. Have Faster. Do you have any idea when you say two instead of all of them? How, do you have any idea? Is it 20? Is all of them 20? Is it 50? Oh, like no, 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 no. Let, okay. me, let, me, let me show you. Well, yeah. If you do a dump all, I guess you see everything, right? It's massive. Not only that. No, no, no. Because we're talking about a property. So so let me share. Yeah. Let me show you very quickly what I'm referring yeah, to. For here. a given element, there's... Right. So this yeah. is my element. And each element mm. has a list right. of properties, right? And I'm just showing you the ones that have Five, information. Maybe. No, yeah. but no, yeah. no. If I show all of them, oh, okay. this is the wow. list of all of the things that you can wow. see. Okay. So it is a very big list. And that's the problem why searching is so slow sometimes, because there are so many properties. And mm. the, whenever you do the find element, it's checking for at least one of those properties. Clear, clear right? ideas. So it has to... Just, just to <laughs> Just to yeah. come back quickly to your or Joe's point about the dynamic uh, page structure. So, so you guys are talking about the page elements changing, are you, as opposed to the right. data? So the data, the data could change in real time. Maybe it's a, like a stock price or something. But as long as, but the gotcha that you mentioned, oh, uh, element got added. Is that right? No, the element, well, the, the information from the element. So let's say that I build a oh, okay. cache right now. Okay. So let's say that I build yeah. a cache right now and the name of this thing or the text of it says search, right? If, and, and I just cached that and, and just think about a cache as a snapshot. So I take a snapshot of how the elements are right now. But if I change that, my snapshot is not changing, right? So if you try to search, it's not going to have the right. updated values for that property because it's just a snapshot okay. in time of that. So it's time. the values and the parameters. So essentially, in, in, in lay terms, what we're seeing on the screen, for example, so it's the parameter and the and the property, like the value and the property. Yeah. That gets saved yeah. to the cache. Yep. Right. So the, well, the value. Gotcha. Now, I, I'm going to yeah. give you a very interesting, uh, I think you're going to get it right away. So right now, as I'm hovering, I... I will see, let me just use the ones that have values, right? So does name have a value? Oh, okay. So notice how this guy has a name called, right. Let me get this one here. Here's the name. Uh, that's the type. What I want is the this one, for example. Can I change the name of that? Okay. I don't know if I could change the name, but here was the thing. Right now, as I'm hovering, I'm looking at the live information on those things, right? I could change stuff and I will see the change on this end because it is live as soon as I query it. But as soon as I hit pause here, that when I hit pause, it took a cache of this. And even if I make changes to this thing right now, so if I say this, I just removed it. This will stay there. It's cached. You see what I mean? So if yeah. I go ahead and press continue and I try to look for it, um, it's going to change because 
there's a difference between the live version of it, whatever changes that are happening right now, and the cached version. And that's the thing that you have to keep in mind. If you have something cached, any changes that happen that you're not aware of might not be reflected on your snapshot. So and, be careful with that. And even though, like in this case, we're talking about mainly from a browser, the same thing can happen in a program, right? It's just not yes. as common that it happens, but it, that it is correct. Happen. But in general, those are the three things that um, were different. I, I'm going to go ahead and run the script right now. If I go to this side, um, let me just delete these two guys. And if I press Control-6, um, this gets filled with the information for my username. And I would definitely assume that there's the password. I cannot see it, but that's what it is. So it took, found the elements, and then it used my username for the username and very likely the password for that field Very so good yeah the, the script is working fine uh, as far as we can tell of course it needs a little bit more testing or whatever but i can give you this uh this script so you can take a look at it you will notice that the difference between what you did and what i'm doing it's not like at least in the auto hotkey syntax is very similar what did change is the uia library syntax which is different yeah. right that, yes. that you, we have to keep those two in mind. The libraries and the auto hotkey syntax are two different things. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It's a great explanation and really interesting to see those improvements and the challenges and the opportunities around auto hotkey and UIA updates. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks everyone. I'll put a um, link to our UIA page, which we have a lot of videos on, but of course things are changing. So, so we're gonna have to go back and yeah. redo some of this stuff. Again, yeah, that's uh, right. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Ian, like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Cheers. Bye. Bye.